Hello parents and pupils of Year 9 and welcome to the Year 9 Parent Information Presentation. My name is Mrs Fox and I am Head of Junior School at Grosvenor Grammar School. The purpose of this presentation is to help us to strengthen the links between school and home so that we're all working together to ensure that your child has the opportunity to reach his or her full potential during their time here in Grosvenor. It is also to provide you with information that you will hopefully find useful as your child progresses through Year 9. During the presentation, you will first hear from Mr Watts, who is the head of Year 9, and then you will hear from me again. Hello and welcome. May I start by saying that I hope you and your family are all fit and well at this time. My name is Jonathan Watts and I'm the head of Year 9 and will be giving you more information on the slides in this part of the presentation. So why is Year 9 so important? In the past, some may have viewed Year 9 as a transition year between the introduction to life in school at Year 8 and the end of Key Stage 3 in Year 10. However, Year 9 is much more than that. It is now a very important academic year as much of the old Key Stage 3 curriculum is now completed in Year 9. Equally, good study habits are also developed in Year 9. Maintaining enthusiasm is not normally a problem. In fact, I personally find teaching Year 9 one of the most enjoyable age groups as the pupils are so open, engaged, still very keen to please and receptive to new ideas. Our expectations, as you might expect, are always high, but we do expect more from our Year 9 pupils compared to those in Year 8. They are expected to be more organised, more independent and be able to be more focused in class as they learn. As already stated, much of the old Key Stage 3 curriculum is now completed in Year 9, as Year 10 has become more of a foundation year for many GCSE subjects, and many students sit modular GCSE examinations at the end of Year 10. Here are some of the key dates, mainly academic, for the year ahead. Starting with the issuing of report cards in November, which will give an indication of your child's start to the academic year and maybe, more importantly, information on their level of effort and, and engagement. This is followed at the start of December by a week of formal examinations with further report cards being issued in January and April, leading to the end of year examinations in late May. We would ask that you help your child to prepare adequately for these important assessments, but also keep an eye on your child's well-being at what can be a, a stressful time. We find that good preparation in itself will help to reduce the pupil's anxiety at this time. Note that the parent consultation is scheduled for Wednesday the 2nd of March. But if you have any queries, no matter how trivial you may think, then please contact us sooner rather than later. Initially through the form teacher or, if you prefer, through myself. You will notice from our previous slide that a careers day is planned for the end of June. Your child, working with others in teams, will be able to highlight their ability to develop some of the skills that employers are looking for. Careers Day is the start of a number of more formal careers events and lessons, leading to your child making their own options choices for the subjects they would like to study at GCSE. Part of this process will also involve individual interviews with our experienced career staff. If you require any further guidance or careers advice for your child, please feel free to contact Mrs Ray, our Head of Careers Education, Information, Advice and Guidance. Going 
Going back to the school assessment dates, these will be preceded by a period of target setting that the pupils, in association with the form tutor and subject teacher, will discuss how to improve in subjects the pupils may find difficult or in which they would really wish to excel. These targets should be specific to the subject in question, be realistic and achievable for the individual pupil, and they should be able to be measured over a set period of time. An example of smart targeting is shown in the next slide. Please take a moment to read through this example. Lesson Monitor is a feature of SIMS, the School Information Management System, which allows us to monitor in real time a pupil's behaviour, achievements and attendance for each chat class every day. In terms of behaviour, we will be noting how a pupil has prepared for class, the quality of their classwork, with the correct homework completed on time. Plus, on occasions, if a pupil has interrupted a teacher in the delivery of their lesson. Thankfully, very disruptive behaviour is very rare and will be acted upon immediately. We are particularly keen to promote positive behaviour and this can also be recorded on Lesson Monitor. The most frequent incidents recorded on Lesson Monitor refer to the lack of pupil organisation in particular, being unprepared for class, failure to complete homework, forgetting to bring in the homework, or even, on occasions, failure to actually do the homework. To help improve pupil organisation, the school places great emphasis on the correct use of the school planner. As you can see in this slide, each pupil is required each week to enter in the planner all the subjects for which homeworks have been set on any given day. These are outlined in the homework schedule which your child will have received this morning and a copy of which is sent to all teachers. Please note that the homeworks are recorded for the day that they are due and not on the day that they are set. This enables parents and pupils to see at a glance which homeworks are due for any given day. Your child's welfare is central to the values and aims of Grosvenor Grammar School. And to help promote pupil welfare, we have an extensive pastoral scheme covering a wide range of themes all with the objective of promoting pupil well-being, resilience and self-confidence. This is covered on two mornings a week during registration and also during a standalone weekly form period which will be led by your child's form tutor or myself with the aim of us really getting to know your child and for them to feel valued and cared for. Thank you for listening. I will now hand over to our Head of Junior School, Mrs Fox. Thank you. Hello again. As I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, my name is Mrs Fox and I'm the Head of Junior School here in Grosvenor. As Head of Junior School, it is my role to oversee the pastoral care of all pupils within the Junior School. It is therefore my responsibility 
to ensure that all pupils in years 8, 9 and 10 are safe, happy, involved and able to perform to their full potential. As you can see from the slide, there is a wide range of support available here in school for your child. If your son or daughter is struggling to cope with aspects of their work, then the first point of contact should be their subject teacher. I would ask you to please encourage your child to speak to their subject teacher as soon as a problem arises. The subject teachers are experts in their field and therefore in the best place to give your child the extra support and guidance that they need. Your child's form tutor is another very useful point of contact. The Year 9 tutors are a team of de very dedicated form tutors who have already begun work on delivering the pastoral scheme of work which deals with issues such as bullying, respect for others, self-resilience and study skills. Your child sees their form tutor every morning and also during their form time, which Mr Watts mentioned earlier. So if a problem arises, please encourage them to speak to their form tutor as soon as possible. The head of your Mr Watts is also always available to help. Obviously throughout the day, Mr Watts will be teaching his classes. But if you ever need to speak to him, please contact the school office and they will inform Mr Watts, who will then get back to you as soon as possible. If you contact the school and Mr Watts is not available, but you really need to speak to someone, then please ask to speak to me as head of junior school. We also have an internal school counsellor, Mrs Caulfield. Mrs Caulfield is a very experienced counsellor who is able to provide support for individual pupils with more sensitive personal issues on a one-to-one -one basis. We also use the services of Family Works Counselling, an external organisation with experienced counsellors that can be offered to pupils to help them work through the challenges such as anxiety, low self-esteem, friendship issues and many others which they face as young teenagers. We generally refer people to Family Works Counselling when the child doesn't wish to speak to anyone in school or if we feel that they require a higher level of support than we can provide here in school. Another form of support is the Classroom Assistant Tutor Programme. This provides additional support to individual pupils who are struggling with issues such as time management, organisation skills and study skills. The programme runs in the mornings during registration and the pupils work with the Classroom Assistant with experience in this area. Referrals for the programme are usually made through the head of year, Mr Watts. Any safeguarding or child protection issue should be passed on immediately to a member of the safeguarding and child protection team. The designated teacher here in Grosvenor Grammar School is Mr Brunt and the deputy designated teachers are myself, Mrs Fox, Mr Cowan who is head of middle school and Mr Young who is head of senior school. The following slides focus on what you can do as parents to support your child. The first point is extremely important and that is to ensure that your child attends school. If your child is absent from school, then they're missing out. They are missing out on learning that is taking place in the classroom, but they're also missing out on the social aspect of school. A 90% of attendance may initially seem acceptable. However, when you consider that this equates to almost four weeks of lost learning, this could really have a detrimental effect on your child's education. We therefore ask that you, if at all possible, ensure that you do not arrange a dental or medical appointment during the school hours, and also that you do not take family holidays during term time. Other things that you can do to support your child would be to encourage them to participate in extracurricular activities. Involvement in extracurricular activities allows pupils to pursue their interests outside their academic sub studies and also helps them to develop their social skills. We would ask that your, you support our healthy eating policy. Good nutrition is essential to the healthy brain development in children, which is of course critical to learning. Children who eat healthily and exercise regularly are likely to perform better academically, feel better about themselves and their bodies, and be better able to cope with stress and regulate their emotions better and avoid feelings of low self-esteem, anxiety and depression. We would ask that you try to limit your child's screen time. As a parent of two children myself, I know that this is easier said than done. 
However, all the advice suggests that screens, mobile phones, tablets and TVs should not be looked upon up to one hour before going to bed because it prevents us from getting to sleep. And it is also more difficult to process what has happened during the day. Therefore, lost learning takes place. We would also ask you to check that your child's homework is done rather than just signing the diary. Please make sure that the homework has been completed before you sign. We would ask you to encourage your child to ask questions and to ask for help, whether academically or pastorally, as soon as a problem arises. Please also make sure that your child's clothes are labelled, as it's much easier for us to return lost property if we know who the items belong to. The school has a Twitter account, so please follow us on Twitter, as this will enable you to keep up to date about what's been going on in school. And finally, we ask you to talk to us. We are here to help and support you and your child in whatever way we can. My final slide simply shows all the aims we have for our pupils as they progress through this academic year and of course through their time here in Grosvenor. They are part of the Grosvenor family, as are you. And so with all of us working together, we can ensure that your son or daughter reaches his or her full potential. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions or queries about this presentation, please do not hesitate to contact either Mr Watts or myself through the school office. Thank you.